anticonvulsant drugs, anti-epileptic drugs, uh, obviously used for epilepsy. What is epilepsy? What's the difference between a seizure and a convulsion? Let me start with that. Uh, epilepsy is associated with seizures. About 1% of the population has these seizure disorders, and that's called epilepsy. Uh, the word seizure, a seizure is associated with uh, increased, uh, uh, an ab let's put it this way, let's put it this way, an abnormal increase in electrical activity in the brain. usually the cerebral cortex, but uh, an increase, a, a abnormal increase in electrical activity in the brain, that is called a seizure. And uh, it, it gets this name seizure because this increase in electrical activity seizes the mind so that one cannot uh, think normally at that moment. Uh, so the normal consciousness has been taken away or seized in some respect. Now, if a seizure is increased electrical activity in the brain, what does the word convulsion mean? Because we're going to see that comes up in a moment. The word convulsion, convulsion is associated with uh, activate, abnormal activation of skeletal muscles. So this is a convulsion is when, this, uh, when seizures, the increase in electrical activity, uh, in the brain leads to uh, uncontrollable muscular contractions. Uncontrollable skeletal muscular contractions. So uh, the word seizure, a seizure has nothing to do with necessarily a seizure does not mean that there are these uh, uncontrollable muscular contractions. That's called a convulsion. But a convulsion is caused or associated with a seizure. Not everybody who has seizures has convulsions. All right? Not everybody who's having this abnormal electrical activity in the brain starts to have uncontrollable muscular contractions. Some do, some don't. And that, in part, is why there are different types of epilepsy or epileptic seizures. So, uh, with that in mind, we divide uh, epilepsy into two broad categories, generalized seizures and, lower down, partial seizures or focal seizures. A generalized seizure is where we have this increase in electrical activity throughout the entire brain and thus a loss of consciousness. Consciousness means awareness. And uh, the most famous of uh, generalized seizures that uh, most of us have either witnessed, we've seen, or we've seen movies of it, are uh, tonic-clonic seizures, or grand mal seizure. The proper name is tonic-clonic. Uh, the old name was grand mal. The word grand mal is French for big bad, a big bad seizure. Uh, this is usually where it lasts a few couple of minutes. Uh, there is this increased electrical activity in the brain resulting in convulsions. So there are these clonic jerking motions of the body uh, so that there are convulsions in grand mal seizures. And there are certain medications that are used to control uh, tonic-clonic seizures involving the whole brain that uh, causes these uncontrollable muscular contractions or clonic jerking. Uh, some people have uh, these epileptic seizures that don't just last for a few minutes, but may last for longer than 30 minutes. That's called status epilepticus. That's uh, clearly more severe and prolonged. Uh, another type is a petite mal seizure or absent seizure. Petite mal means little bad seizure. These just last a matter of seconds. And this appears as somebody where they just vary for just a few seconds, lose consciousness. There's a, in, a rapid increase in electrical activity in their brain, and just for a few moments they're not aware, and then it comes back again. 
Now, anytime I ever mention that, everybody says, oh my gosh, I have petite ball seizures, because I like sometimes just, like, uh, then all of a sudden I know where I, no, you were doing what's called daydreaming, daydreaming. So daydreaming is when uh, you uh, kind of let your mind wa wander uh, briefly, and so uh, you're not aware of where you're at for that moment. You actually are aware, you just don't care. <laughs> All right, you hear the teacher droning on in the background and you just don't care and you kind of space out. You're spacing out, that's not a petite mal seizure. A, petite, a real petite mal seizure, the person literally has no awareness for a few seconds. Uh, in this case, there are no convulsions. There's no convulsions with a petite mal seizure. It uh, lasts too short of a time to cause any uncontrollable skeletal muscular contractions. Now, uh, there are also uh, partial uh, seizures, and by partial or focal, that means that this increase in electrical activity in the brain is localized. It only involves certain small areas of the brain, not the entire brain. Because it doesn't involve, does not involve the whole brain, but just small areas, the person does not lose consciousness. In, uh, uh, in the other, in the generalized seizures, uh, the person lost consciousness lost awareness, but in the partial or focal, there is no loss of consciousness. And uh, they, they further subdivide these uh, into different categories. It may involve uh, some uh, un uncontrollable muscular activity, uh, because even though it's just a small brain area that's firing off uh, it, with increased electrical activity, it may involve a, a motor area which sends signals down the motor neurons, activating muscles to uh, contract. So. Uh, we can get this, uh, what's known as a, a simple focal seizure, with, uh, which might include uh, lip smacking or fumbling hands or picking at clothes or loss of awareness, but usually not the loss of awareness. So uh, again, we're not going into all the details of the different types of epilepsy there are. We're just mentioning that there are different types. On page K2, uh, the anticonvulsant drugs. Uh, we had once mentioned... Uh, when we were first learning about how to evaluate the relative safety of a drug, and we used the term <laughs> therapeutic index, TI, therapeutic index, which we said was the ratio between the LD50 and the ED50, that some of the drugs that have the smallest therapeutic index, and therefore a very small, narrow margin of safety between the therapeutic dose and the lethal dose, are anti-epileptic drugs. So these anticonvulsants or anti-epileptic drugs generally have a very narrow therapeutic index. Not surprising, they are affecting the brain, and they're affecting the brain in a powerful way. Um, they, uh, in general, most of these drugs, most of these drugs are CNS depressants. And let's think about that for a moment. Does that make sense? If the problem with epilepsy is abnormal increase in electrical activity in your brain, does it make sense that the way the drugs we use to control it would decrease or slow down electrical activity in the brain? So we use CNS depressants to slow down electrical activity and prevent these epileptic seizures. You know, again, if you kind of think about it, uh, an antidepressant drug, you're depressed, you're slowed down, let's speed it up, let's increase electrical activity. If you have epilepsy, let's slow down electrical activity. Uh, because of that, most of them also cause drowsiness and fatigue because they are slowing down electrical activity in the brain. Uh, many of these drugs, not all, but many of them have uh, anticholinergic or another way of saying anticholinergic is atropine-like actions. They are like atropine, atropine-like actions, parasympatholytic actions, and therefore they cause xerostomia. Again, the, the large proportion of drugs affecting the brain have this side effect of causing dry mouth. Um, Okay, there are a whole bunch of these. I'm not attesting you on names of drugs. Just want to give you a general sense of what they're doing. Uh, the first drug that I mentioned, I'm mentioning you've uh, all heard of, phenytoin. Phenytoin goes under a number of brand names, including Dilantin. Uh, there's generics available. It works by blocking sodium ion channels uh, in neurons, 
and therefore slows down the generation and conduction of action potentials. In that respect, it's somewhat like a local anesthetic, isn't it? Um, and uh, so it's used to control different types of uh, epileptic seizures, including grand mal, but it's also used for other purposes. Uh, it is also used to treat or control trigeminal neuralgia, also known as tic de la rue. Has anybody ever heard that term, tic de la rue? All right, so uh, the, some people have chronic pain associated with uh, abnormal activity in their trigeminal nerve, and they're getting uh, all this flow of sensory Im impulses from the face into their brain, causing facial pain and so on, called trigeminal neuralgia, <coughs> tic de la rue. Uh, also, uh, dilantin is used uh, for cardiac arrhythmias. I've mentioned before, any drug that slows down electrical activity in the heart would do that in the brain, or vice versa. If it slows down electrical activity in the brain, it would slow it down in the heart. We had mentioned lidocaine. If we say that word to you, you think of local anesthetic. If you say the word lidocaine to most physicians or nurses, they think cardiac antiarrhythmic. It slows down electrical activity by blocking sodium ion channels. So, uh, so uh, both lidocaine and dilantin uh, are used um, for these purposes. And of course, notoriously famous, it does cause gingival hyperplasia, which all of you do. Um, Tegretol is another drug used to control uh, epileptic seizures. It also blocks sodium ion channels and thus reduces or slows down electrical activity in the brain used to treat all types of epilepsy, uh, also used in the control of trigeminal pain uh, and chronic pain syndromes in general. On page uh, K3, you notice that at the top I would mention it can be used to treat manic depression. So a lot of these have a lot of weird, weird uses. Uh, another one, Depakote. I don't know if anybody's run into Depakote. This works totally differently than uh, Dilantin. Uh, it, it works by enhancing GABA levels. Now GABA, and I'm not testing you on this, but GABA, gamma amino butyric acid, is an inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain. Think about this. You can reduce electrical activity in the brain by either slowing down electrical activity by blocking sodium channels, which is what Dilantin does, or increasing inhibitory neurotransmitters in the brain. And that's what this drug does, is it raises the GABA inhibitory neurotransmitter levels in the brain. So this is also used uh, to control certain types of epilepsy, as well as control migraine headaches. This is the only drug I know of that can cause hypersalivation. Now, I don't think it, it's worth, I'm not going to test you on that, I don't think you need to memorize it. But it's the only drug that I know, and certainly the only drug that I'm presenting to you, that actually causes over-salivation. If, if anything, and most drugs cause uh, dry mouth, xerostomia, but this one actually increases salivation. Uh, another one, Zorontin, uh, 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 can also cause uh, gingival hyperplasia. Um, and uh, phenobarbital. Now, phenobarbital is actually one of the earliest and oldest drugs used to control epilepsy. It is a barbiturate sedative. <laughs> and uh, barbiturate sedatives are drugs that are used to cause sedation, drowsiness, sleep. And it makes sense that the very first drugs they tried to slow down this in abnormal increase in electrical activity in the brain that causes seizures is uh, sedatives. Drugs that slow down, make the person sleepy, lethargic. Neurontin works by a different mechanism. Again, I'm not testing you on it. It actually inhibits voltage-gated calcium ion channels in synaptic knobs. You might have learned in a physiology course that in order for any neuron to release a neurotransmitter from the synaptic knobs, calcium ions have to flow into the synaptic knob to cause the release of the neurotransmitter, exocytosis. And so it actually works by blocking these uh, entry of calcium ions into the synaptic knobs. Again, I'm not testing you on it. It's uh, used to treat certain types of epilepsy. It's also used to treat 
off-label uses, psychosomatic pain, tinnitus, migraines, and agitation. Uh, all right, there's uh, Topamax, and on the uh, next page, uh, Lamictal. Uh, Kepra is a, a new drug that works in a new novel way. I, I'm not even going to get into what it does. 